One of the biggest things that I see up and coming traders struggling with right now is their entries and their exits. I'm seeing a lot of people either holding on to losers for too long, moving their stop losses, adding more money to their account, crazy things. I know I've been there eight years in the game, we've seen it all. And I'm also seeing them having good trades and not letting them ride the distance. Now your strategy doesn't necessarily matter. You can be a scalper, you can be an intraday trader, you can be a swing trader. What really matters is one, your entry point, because obviously you have to get into the market, right? You have to enter the market to be able to pull something out of the market. So one is your entry point, but the entry isn't where you actually get paid. The entry is your entry. Like think about going on a date with a girl. Or think about taking a girl out to dinner. She's not your girlfriend when you take her out to dinner. She's your girlfriend after you close the deal, you seal the deal, you sell her on you. Same thing in the market. You're not making money when you enter the trade. You're in making money when you exit the position. So you got to make sure the entry is worth it, but you also got to make sure the exit is worth it. Now, instead of correlating that to real life and dating and stuff like that, what I will say is one of the biggest things that you guys can do at home to get better entries and exits is start focusing on supply and demand zones or institutional candles and institutional levels. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take y'all into the chart and I'm gonna break this down a little bit more in depth, just a quick entry exit strategy, taking price from one level to the next, from one support to one resistance, bouncing it back and forth, kind of like playing ping pong. So let's hop onto the charts. So guys, one of the easiest strategies that I had ever learned was when I first started trading, it was all about supply and demand zones. Now, I didn't really understand supply and demand zones back then, but I definitely do now. But, you know, there's so much fluff out there. People try to make it so hard and make concepts so in-depth. In reality, guys, supply is above price, demand is below price. Now, in regards to it, when we first started trading, we would always look for the last move up as a zone of supply. Just like these. And then we'd look at the these last candles down as areas of demand. So we would call these supply and demand zones, supply and demand zones, and we would trade from zone to zone. So the first thing we would do is we'd come up on our chart and we'd mark off all the relative supply and demand zones. And if you even try to back test this, doesn't matter what pair you're trading, you can actually start seeing how well these things actually correlate, how price goes from one zone to the next, so on and so forth. So in this example, we had this first high that was created. This was our area of supply. This was the first high that put in a push up, created new highs that broke structure. So in our mind, we have to factor in that this is a very strong area of supply. This is a very strong area where the bears came in and the selling pressure really started. Now, we also have minor areas. I'm gonna put this as a red area because this is a major. And then we'll... Uh, We'll label some of these out. We'll say this is a red one too for majors. We have majors and minors. Now, in regards to it, the thought process you have to have is, is if this is the last high right here, or this is the external structure, from this high down to this low, this is the overall structure points from the high to the low. So from that range all the way down, what we got to factor in is that there's internally a ton of supply and demand zones that we could take short-term trades off of. For us, what we want to do is we want to look at the bigger overall plays. Now, what does that mean? It means that, hey, if this was the, the highest point that put in this new lowest point, this is our range. This is going to be one of the key areas we're going to look at for price to eventually revisit. And as we see here, obviously price came back. I'm sure there's multiple confirmations. There's some divergence on this move too. Multiple confirmations. We'll talk about divergence in another video, but multiple confirmations on, hey, when price returns back to this supply zone, we should take an enter. Uh, we should enter short and we should ride this down to the next major demand zone or even the minor demand zones. So we could say there's a minor demand zone here minor demand zones all throughout this. Now, this is one example of a way you can enter and exit because a lot of times what happens is people will catch this great sniper entry right here. They will hesitate to take price any further, right? They hesitate to take price any further. They hesitate, they hesitate, they hesitate. They don't end up taking price any further. And, you know, then they regret it. They missed out on all this move. And they're like, oh, okay, well, man, it's going to keep going. I'll sell here. They get caught in the nonsense. They get stopped out one direction or the other. And then finally price does their move. And then by this time you have the most amazing entry. By the end of it, you've lost the profit from the first trade because you got greedy your psychology is messed up you wanted more you didn't know where to hold the trades to now we could look at this in multiple different examples now another great supply and demand zone 
that we can kind of correlate from that relative high to the low that created that high. If you guys just focus on structure alone, structure meaning higher highs, higher lows, higher lows, higher highs. If you focus on just structure alone, there's always going to be a some type of supply zone off of these highs. There's always going to be some type of demand zone off of these lows. And we don't have to get anything tricky and start adding smart money concepts and this, that, and the third. We can keep it just as simple as this. As you learn and as you progress as a trader and as you start adding more to your, uh, you know, your understanding and your knowledge, you can start really doing a lot of amazing things with within your own trading. But even just looking at the bigger picture, all right, here's the low. This low made this whole move to the upside. Here was the high. Price pulled back, made a new high. So this is our highest high overall. This is our range. Great. Perfect. This is our range. Now let's correlate the next thing. Here was our institutional candle. We're not going to get too ahead of ourselves. This was that last candle up that created this whole move to the downside. What does that mean? It means simply there's a level of demand down in here, somewhere down up in here that we could potentially retrace back to. But this was the low that pushed price back up put in that new high overall what are we seeing we're seeing price doing this seeing price starting to do something like this so what do we see we see that there's a demand supply zone right here aka this one price came in got into it and then where should we take this to at least the next zone in regards to it trading in this style gives you an opportunity to catch major major pips depending on the pairs you're trading right now all the examples i've shown you guys have just been simply on the one hour in the simplest breakdown it doesn't matter what pairs you guys are trading all you got to do is just wait for price to get back to where it was at if price makes a lower high to a lower low eventually price is going to have to pull back before it continues well if it's going to do that what you have to factor in is that somewhere at the top of this range, there's an area of supply. Somewhere at the bottom of this low, there's an area of demand to take profit at. Now, let's look at that on this chart. What do we see? We see this last big bullish candle to the upside. Obviously, we could refine this and I could teach you guys how to get better sniper entries, small stops, blah, blah, blah. But right now, I just want to make a simple idea and concept for you guys to, hey, when price returns to this supply zone, let's go ahead and go short. Where should we take it to? Where should we ride this thing to? Where should we try to swing it to? Well, this looks like a good demand zone right here. So when it comes down to it, what are we doing? We're taking trades, catching retracements, and we're trading down lower. And you're just simply going from supply to demand zone, right? I can't kid you guys enough. This is one of the most simplest ways of trading. I mean, my personal way of trading is a lot more complex. I use a lot more technicals. I do a lot more things. But the basis of how I see the market is I start with my supply and demand zones, my order blocks, whatever you want to call it. And from from there, I build upon that. I build and I build and I build and I build and I refine and I refine and I refine and I refine. But with that being said, guys, this is going to be a very simple, easy put entry and exit strategy. Entering at supply and demand zones and exiting at supply and demand zones. All you have to do is understand which direction structure is going. In this case, this is a sell. So we want to, in this case, price is going lower. So we want to wait for some corrective retracement into a supply zone to ride price down into a demand zone. If price was bullish, we would be looking for some type of correction into a demand zone if price was bullish we'd be looking for a correction into some type of demand zone to then take price higher into a supply or like we like to call these weak highs and that's kind of how we like to do it with that being said guys this is going to be a very simple way looking at supply and demand zones and taking them into account and adding them to your own strategy go back test this live test this forward test this let's try it out so guys hopefully you have a better understanding now easy entry and exits in the market you know you can go into super in depth with the fibs the technicals the supply and demand the market geometry the institutional levels the smart money concepts all this stuff but if you just want to keep it simple and trade from one zone to the next i think that we did a pretty good job of breaking this down in this video and if you want to start trading with us here at trade star strategies we do a few different free live sessions every single week sunday nights we do a weekly market outlook but with that being said guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video leave a like leave a comment let us know what you thought about this let us know what you would like to see in the next video so that being said appreciate y'all we're gonna see y'all from the top